flat or boring or the colors seem to be mismatched or dull. If so, you might be struggling with finding the right color combinations. In this video, I'll show you how to use Color Like a Pro and go from this to these with the power of complementary colors. Okay, that's enough. We get it, complementary colors. So thanks for joining me and let's get drawing. You can ask yourself, why should I care about complementary colors? Can't I just draw what I see? How does understanding color theory make a difference in the art that I make? Let's dive into the mindset of an art pro. Professionals in the art field constantly consider color theory. It's an important part of creating art that is color based. Knowing how to use color can enhance your drawing skills. Imagine you're planning to create a drawing. You have a vase, a beautiful bunch of flowers placed on a table. At first glance, you think it looks great and decide to draw it. However, as you continue working on it, you notice that the image appears dull lacks impact, or perhaps you realize that some of the colors clash. It's as if your drawing has just given up. When you begin, you thought about your subject, what it would look like, but in reality, you struggle to create a vibrant and fantastic image. This lackluster result could be contributed to a single element, color harmony. For me, color harmony is subject harmony. Now, imagine if you approach your drawing with some understanding of color theory. Instead of dismissing it as boring old concept, picture it as a secret knowledge possessed by professional artists. By learning how to use complementary colors like a pro, your art could easily jump into the realm of wow. That boring vase could transform into something extraordinary. To help you achieve that, I'll draw three butterflies and introduce you to your new friend, complementary colors. I'll also discuss three simple rules that help to create better color harmony, balance, contrast, and variation later in the video, which can bring your work to life and make creating art an enjoyable experience. Let's get started with our subject. Each butterfly will showcase a different complementary color combination. We'll begin with the purple and yellow butterfly. For all three butterflies, I'll work from imagination using Stonehenge paper. To maximize blending with visual interest, I'll utilize a variety of purples and yellows for this first butterfly. In my November newsletter, which you can access for free through my website, link in description box below, I'll provide the color list and a sketch of the butterflies. I'll also use erasers, solvents, blending pencils, and one of my favorite pencil sharpeners, m and Mobius and Rupert. The first step is selecting a dominant color, which in this case is yellow. Consider the different shades and intensities of yellow that can be used to depict the wings. Experiment with lights and dark tones, shades and tints to add depth and dimension to your artwork. Don't be afraid to explore warm and cool shades of yellow to achieve balance in the overall image. When working with colored pencils, we have the opportunity to work directly with color. This medium is rich in hues and mastering the art of blending and mixing them together is crucial for creating dynamic and amazing artwork. Color plays a significant role in the vast world of art. They have a power to evoke emotions, set moods, and captivate audience. Among the countless color combinations available, complementary colors hold a special place. So what exactly are complementary colors? Complementary colors are hues positioned opposite each other on the color wheel. When used together, they create a striking contrast. In this case, we'll focus on red, green, orange, blue, and yellow, and purple. Take a look at the color wheel. It represents the spectrum of colors seamlessly flowing from one hue to the next. Understanding the relationship between these colors allows you to create visually striking and harmonious artwork. Now, let's delve into the concept of complementary colors further by examining a butterfly with purple and yellow hues. It's fascinating how nature effortlessly creates astonishing beauty through perfectly harmonized colors. The combination of purple and yellow serves as a classic example of complementary colors found in nature. The contrast between the cool tones of purple and the warm tones of yellow produces a captivating effect. It's this contrast that grabs our attention and makes the artwork stand out. Always keep this in mind as you work on your pieces. Purple will be used as an accent color to add depth and details to specific areas of the wings. In this drawing, we're using yellow in sweeping areas, combined with purple to create shading and depth. This combination gives a sense of form and dimension to the butterfly. Remember, when working with complementary colors, find your main color and accent it with complementary color. So we're going to look at rule number one, and that's balance. Achieving balance is to add big punches of yellow instead of an equal amount. By strategically placing bursts of yellow on the purple wings, you create focal points that captures the viewer's attention. You have the freedom to decide how much purple and yellow you want to incorporate into your drawing. Experiment with different proportions and placements to find the balance that best suits your artistic vision.
This applies to subjects as well. Subjects of two complementary colors work better when you have more one color over another. To enhance shading, use lighter and darker shades of purple and consider adding a small amount of purple pink or blue purple for hue variations. Apply the same idea to the yellow, adding a little bit of orange yellows or even orange greens with pale yellows for visual interest. In addition to purple and yellow, there's countless combinations of complementary colors waiting to be explored. The color wheel provides a vast array of options for you to play with. As a beginner artist, it's essential for you to understand and experiment with complementary colors. They have the power to breathe life into your drawings, adding a sense of harmony and balance. By incorporating complementary colors into your butterfly artwork, or any artwork, you can elevate it from a mere representation to a visually captivating masterpiece. And you'll also have more control over your work. You can look at your subject more objectively and have a really good idea whether or not it's going to be successful and work well. Moving on to the blue and orange butterfly, the second rule of working with complementary colors is contrast. Combining colors from opposite ends of the color wheel, like blue and orange or red and green, creates the most visual striking combinations. They are a big contrast. The high contrast between these hues injects energy and vibrancy into your design. To deepen your grasp of complementary colors, take the time to observe and study nature. Look closely at how colors interact and complement each other in real life. Examples are flowers or sunsets. Nature is a limitless source of appreciation, offering a deeper appreciation for the power of color. When using colored pencil, layering colors is a crucial element. Proper layering techniques will bring your butterflies to life, enhancing their vibrancy and luminosity. Techniques like burnishing, blending, and creating texture will unleash stunning effects that showcase the power of complementary colors. One area that all artists should know is that working with complementary colors has a unique effect when they are mixed together. Complementary colors can easily become muddied. Let's imagine mixing blue and orange, which are complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposite on the color wheel. Blue is a color that contains a special ingredient called green light, while orange contains another ingredient called red light. When we mix blue and orange together, something interesting happens. It's as if the green light and the red light start to fight with each other. They cancel each other out, almost like when you have two opposite forces that push against each other and make them both weaker. So the green light and the red light become less strong, and that's why the colors become less vibrant. When this happens, the result is not as bright or intense as the original blue and orange colors. It's like taking out some of the brightness from each color and making them a bit dull. That's why mixed complementary colors can appear desaturated or muddy. So, mixing blue and orange together creates a desaturated or muddy color because their ingredients of green light and red light weaken each other, making the resulting color less bright and vibrant. Just be mindful of potential color muddying when blending complementary colors together. To stop this from happening in your work, be aware of the areas of complementary color mixes. Don't overlay the colors excessively on top of each other. Try to avoid mixing or layering in the same place unless you are looking to create a muddied gray hue. I often suggest that prior to starting on a good drawing, do a proactive run of a small subject with your chosen colors. Exploring different shades and tints of complementary colors is what is considered to be a hue variation. This is where rule three comes in handy. Instead of sticking to one simple hue of each complementary color, you can use hue variations. For our drawing, we're also experimenting with different shades and tints of complementary colors. 
Adding tints and shades, lightness and darkness, as I've mentioned before, can lead to harmonious and visually appealing combinations because you're working within the same color, but just a lighter and darkness of it. Instead of using pure saturated colors, try exploring lighter or darker shades so you have a little bit more of black maybe in one color, or a little bit more white in one color, or even adding a touch of gray for a more nuanced and sophisticated use of complementary colors. For our third butterfly, we're using a mix of red and green. These colors mix the same way as the yellow, purple, and orange blue. The dominant color is red and the accent is green. The balance lies between adding a smaller amount of the green with variations in the colors creating sharp and harmonious contrast between the two colors. Remember to limit your use of complementary colors in a single artwork to avoid overwhelming or clashing color schemes. In this example that we're doing with the butterflies, this is really just about understanding complementary colors and how you can work with a variety of different shades and tints to actually get a piece of artwork to work successfully. But it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to create all of your artwork this way or look for artwork specifically about complementary colors. You want to look for work that has a balance. You want to be able to work with different color combinations to make them work successfully. And that's what color theory is all about. It's about understanding all the elements and bring them all together. Limit your use of complementary colors in a single artwork to avoid overwhelming or clashing color schemes. Subtle hints of complementary colors can be more effective than using them in abundance. If you're working on a subject that has complementary colors in it, try to inject a variation on the hue. Lastly, don't be afraid to experiment and have fun with color. As a beginner artist, it's important to explore different techniques and approaches. Allow yourself to make mistakes and learn from them. Embrace the joy of discovering new color combinations and let your creativity soar. In conclusion, complementary colors are pairs of colors that sit opposite each other on the color wheel, creating a striking contrast. By understanding and incorporating these colors, such as blue and orange, into your butterfly drawing or any of your drawings, you can bring depth, harmony, and that extra touch of magic to your artwork. So grab your color pencils and let that color lead the way.